this tab. There's me. We don't care about me, though. Okay. So try to make this uh, short and sweet. So we're going to look at what happens when light hits a boundary. Um, there's going to be a couple of things that can happen. I'm going to give you two laws. The first law is called the law of reflection. This is going to be a really duh law. Um, so when light hits a mirror, we're not going to talk, we don't have enough time to talk about the images that you see and why like some mirrors like make it, make your image bigger and some mirrors make an image smaller. We don't have time for that. We're just going to look at what happens when light hits a mirror. Okay. So I'm going to draw this uh, in a second after I explain what we call the angle of incidence. Okay. So this is going to be uh, a concept that will work for reflection and what we'll see is refraction. Okay. So the angle of incidence is the angle that a ray approaches an object from the normal. Like, what the heck is from the normal? Okay, I don't know if you guys remember normal force. Normal force is the force that a surface pushes up perpendicular in a perpendicular fashion. So like um, 90 degrees. So whenever you see normal in the world of physics, we're talking about 90 degrees, okay? So here's an example of what I'm talking about. Hopefully you guys can see this. All right, so this is a mirror. This is an axis that we call the normal. So it is 90 degrees from the mirror. Our mirror is gonna be perfectly flat. We call that a plane mirror. When you start curving mirrors, you see weird, funky uh, reflections. Like if you have, if some of you ladies maybe have a makeup mirror, we got a guy get in there so you can see your face up close and personal and it blows up your face. You're like, oh my God, what is happening to my pores and all that stuff, right? That's a makeup mirror, okay? It's curved. This mirror, what we're looking at is we're going to say that a light ray, we're going to treat light rays as traveling in straight lines. Just makes things a little bit easier. Even though this is a wavy deal, we're going to treat it as traveling in a straight line. The law of reflection states that when this light ray strikes this mirror and it is reflected, it is going to be reflected at the same angle from the normal. So I'm just gonna make up an angle here. This looks like to me about 50 degrees. So we would say this is the angle of incidence, sometimes labeled theta i. This would be 50 degrees this is the angle of reflection, okay? So kind of, a, I'd start with a dumb one. It's duh, right? Like things are gonna bounce off smooth surfaces and they're going to reflect. And that's why you can see your image in something that is a smooth surface. So that's called the angle of reflection, which we're not gonna spend much time on today just because I think you guys can all grasp that. So the law of reflection basically states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection, okay? If this thing hit it steeper and it was 30 degrees from the normal, it's gonna be reflected at 30 degrees from the normal. So that's the angle, that's the law of reflection. Now, this does have some consequences. And like I said, I, I go too fast today. I will share these slides online, okay? Uh, I'll share these slides online with you guys. So smooth surfaces like a mirror will reflect. You get regular reflection. But a rough surface like a wall, it tends to take the light rays and it tends to scatter them in such a way where you're not going to be able to get a, a, a nice image or a, a clear image. Okay, That's called diffuse reflection. So it scatters the light rays randomly because a wall has a texture that is different than a mirror. A mirror does a really good job of reflecting rays in a very consistent angular pattern, whereas a wall, especially if it's been textured, especially if it has um, you know, different nooks and crannies or whatever, what happens is, is that it scatters the light, and that's why you can't see a reflection in a wall. It's very difficult to. Now, if you have like a really, really, really shiny, smooth, sat or like a, a super glossy finish, um, you might be able to see partially a reflection. It's kind of weird to think of. Uh, <laughs> you know, you don't really look at uh, too many walls for your reflection. But think about like my floor in my classroom where there's tile. 
Okay, it's fairly smooth. You can see the lights reflecting, just like this whiteboard. You know, you can see some different reflections as well, but it's not as clear and crisp as a mirror. Okay, so that's reflection. What we're gonna spend more time on today is talking about refraction of light. And the refraction of light basically is how light changes direction when it goes from one medium to another medium. It's a change in direction of a light ray at a boundary between two different media. So think about it this way. When light enters water, it goes from air to water. That's a, that's a boundary between two media. And what happens is, is that light rays will bend and it gives us all sorts of weird, wacky phenomenons. I mean, think like um, why you see a rainbow is because of refraction of light. Um, why you would see a mirage is because of the refraction of light. Um, why you see images like why if you've ever gone bow fishing, you try to shoot an arrow at a fish in a lake. If you aim right at the fish, I will guarantee you miss because of the refraction of light. Okay. So the ray from the initial medium is still called the angle of incidence, but instead of bouncing off of our surface, what's going to happen is it's going to enter our new medium. And when that ray goes into the new medium, you get what's called the angle of refraction. So I'm going to go ahead and draw, just make up something real quick here. All right. So something that you guys can look at. Soon. So if the ray bends, so the angle of refraction is less than the angle of incidence, the object that it enters is what we call more optically dense. So think about like what uh, the lenses of your glasses might do. What they're designed to do is to take light rays from air and bend the light rays to produce a image on your retina because your eyeballs are jacked up or your lens is messed up in your eyeball or whatever, okay? Um, or you have old eyes like I do and your lens can't accommodate for those things. So it's tough for you to read things that are close to you. So that's kind of what refraction is. I'm gonna show you guys a diagram here and how light is refracted. Now, the, on page 486, we're gonna use that little chart here and we're gonna look at something that's more or less optically dense. So I'm gonna to try to recreate this so you guys can see this. If we were in my classroom, I could just draw on the board. We're not in my classroom. We're in my home. I cannot just draw on the board so or draw on that image there. So I'm going to show you guys what happens here. Okay. So I'm going to exit out of this. I'm going to go here. Okay. So let's just pretend that we have a light ray. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a little dashed line here. And this is going to represent the normal. So this is 90 degrees. And we have a light ray that is going to strike, boom, right there. Okay, uh, just to make it easy, we're just gonna say that's 45 degrees, no calculations yet. And here's the thing, this normal extends from one medium to the other, okay? So from air to glass, and I just said this is glass or whatever. The idea of being more optically dense occurs when the glass basically slows this light down. So you would think that the light could travel straight through but it doesn't, it bends this light and it makes this angle, what we call our angle of refraction, smaller than our angle of incidence. So that, and I don't know what that is. That's why we're gonna use this equation a little bit. But what happens is, think of it as like, um, I'm driving in a car and I'm going from concrete to mud. What's gonna happen is, is that the wheels are gonna start spinning and spinning, and I'm gonna turn even if I stay at the same rate, okay? And my dog is here, come here. Hey, come here, baby, come here. And Allie wants to do some physics, so that's sweet, okay? So this is Allie, she, she's unreal. What have you been doing? Been out by the grill or what? All right, don't lie. All right, so, Angle of incidence, angle of refraction, this is a smaller angle, this is more optically dense. If the light bent away from the normal, that means that this would be more optically dense. 
That's kind of the idea behind refraction. What happens is, is that this creates all sorts of wacky images. When you look at things that travel through um, a different boundary of different media, it just makes weird images and has all sorts of different uh, optical uh, ramifications, I guess. Okay. So what we're going to do, and all we're really going to do, the calculation portion of this is figure out just exactly how much that light's bending using a concept called Snell's law. So when light enters a new medium, it's either going to be reflected or refracted. If it's refracted, the degree of bending depends on the angle of incidence and what the new medium has going on. In other words, some of the properties of the new medium. So the on classroom, the chart that I shared with you has a just a series of different uh, medium. We had like va a vacuum, air, water, ethanol, crown glass, quartz, flint glass, diamond, all sorts of different things that can bend light. Okay. So Snell's law. I'm going to go ahead and write Snell's law on the board here. Okay. All right. You're going to have to make sure your calculator is in degrees to do this. Okay. So I'm going to write it a little bit different. Um, here's Snell's law. The... N stands for the index of refraction of the incident ray, so where it's coming from, times the sine of theta i, this is the angle from the normal, is equal to nr, this is the bound, this is the medium that it's going into, this stands for index of refraction for the second medium, is equal to sine theta r. Got a lot of stuff going on there. Okay, let's just go ahead and recreate that scenario we had, where we had light hitting, going from air, hitting at the normal and causing it to bend. And let's just say we okay glass. There's two types of glass. Today we're going to use flint glass. Flint glass, which has an index of refraction of 1.62. Okay, question is, what the heck is this angle? This is where we use Snell's law. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to use Snell's law. It's pretty easy. So the light ray is coming from the air. So the air is going to be this side, measurements from the air of that side, and the flint glass is that side. So N of air is pretty close to one. Three zeros and a three. And if you just use one there, you're gonna get the same answer, okay? The only time you don't get the same answer is when it goes from a vacuum to air, all right? All right, so we have the sine of 45, because that's the angle of incidence from the normal, is gonna be equal to 1.62 times the sine of theta r. So we just solved for theta r. If you have your calculators, go ahead and do that. I'm going to push pause here. Six degrees. 26 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degrees. All right. Okay, let's do one more here. Um, let's do, uh, and I'll just give you guys these. But like I said, when you're looking for where is he finding these indices of refraction, it's coming from that chart I shared on Google Classroom. Okay, we'll just do another one. Let's just say we have uh, some mystery. Let me just blow this up so the video is a little bit bigger. Um, not for you, but for the recording. Okay, so let's say we have this mystery glass. We don't know what it is, okay? And let's say we have an incident ray that strikes at 42 degrees from the normal. The light enters, and it bends 
And the angle of refraction here, which I'll draw right there, is, I don't know, let's just say it's 27 degrees, something like that, okay? The question is, what is the index of refraction of this mystery chemical here, uh, mystery glass? Um, we're just going to assume it's coming from air. We're going to use Snell's law to figure this out, okay? So since the ray is coming from air, we would say that, um, let's just go ahead and see this. We would go. 1.003 times the sine of 42 is equal to N, which we don't know what it is, times the sine of 27. We solve for N, right? He like said, I'm going to push pause here so we're not wasting time. I'm going to take that silence as absolutely. Okay. So that's using Snell's law. I don't know what kind of glass this is, but I know it has an index of refraction of 1.5. Um, coincidentally, if this thing did exit and go back into air, okay, I don't want to get to geometry here, but when it hits, it's going to exit at 42 degrees. Okay? It's one of those things. All right. Okay, so let's see. That's all I got for that. Like I said, this is going to be your last lesson, so hopefully um, that wasn't too quick or crazy. I'm